I have a long history of drawing Spongebob. This is my drawing journal from kindergarten, which exclusively has a different Spongebob character on each page. Under the section labeled Family, I have Man Ray. He was a, um, a distant father figure. There's even drawings of the taxi stands and rock tiki's from Battle for Bikini Bottom, if you didn't quite get the message that I kinda like that game. I had tons of books related to the show, most notably this one, a how to draw book that didn't just teach you how to carbon copy the style of the cartoon. They included a bunch of different art styles to experiment with, even if I did end up tracing them most of the time. The show has always had great art, from the gorgeous flower designs in the sky to the paint smears in every background. Spongebob is without any hint of irony, my aesthetic. I'm big into talking versions of everyday objects named Bob. Now I fell off the Spongebob hype train around Season 5, and by the early 2010s I was spending my own money on games, so I wasn't about to go out and spend my limited funds on a game called Spongebob Squiggle Pants. But six years and five dollars later, I am finally getting that chance. So, let- I have made a grave miscalculation. Oh, I didn't see- Oh, I didn't see you come in. Welcome to my new show. Fucking around in the kitchen, this time with art. Today, we have acquired a U-Draw tablet and we are gonna put it to a test run. Okay, so today, guys, we have brought in a U-Draw tablet. Now, see, the thing about the U-Draw that surprised me is it's actually, like, it's very thin. It's almost as, like, as thin as paper. It's also almost as light as paper, despite its surprisingly big size. So that's very nice. It's a very well-designed tablet. I also have the U-Draw pen accessory. As you can see here, it is very ergonomically designed. It's got it's got a lot of features that just make me say, wow, I would, I would buy three of these. And that's what I did. So I got, I got this one, and I got this one. All, all beautiful in their own way, but first, before we get drawn, we gotta put on the wrist strap, because we don't wanna kill anyone. That's not covered under the warranty. Am I right, guys? Am I- Ben. Absolutely. He, he, yes. Okay, so today, before we start, we gotta talk about what we're gonna draw. And I'm gonna draw Spongebob hanging out with some friends, because what what do you think of when you think of SpongeBob? You think of you think of handsome fellows hanging out together, and that's what we're gonna draw. So today we're gonna start off with the SpongeBob. Get some nice yellow in there. Look at that texture. Look at that. I would lick that off the page if it was a page. It's not a page. It's a Udraw tablet. Yes. Some eyes. Gonna give him some eyelashes. Okay. Look at that. It's a handsome guy. Give him a smile. Get that buck tooth in there. Hey, look at that, he's, he's coming together, he's coming together good. Gotta give him some sponge holes, some freckles, and we'll just give him some arms and he's good to go. He's good to go make a patty. Look at that. He's not deformed in any way. Now, we gotta give him a friend because he's all alone right now. And who better than a sponge's best friend, Gary the Snail. Look at that, look at that, that's, that's amazing. So now the thing, guys, the thing that's so amazing about the U-Draw is that not only does it have top-tier drawing tools, it also has top-tier additional art tools, such as textures. Now the texture we're going to start off with today is drawing some clouds, because no scene like this is complete without a few clouds in the sky. So we're going to add some clouds over here. You know, just add some nice clouds. Look at that. It's a bright day already. But what else does Gary and Spongebob like to do? Well, for one, Spongebob has hobbies. And what's one of his favorite hobbies? Jellyfishing. Okay, let's give him some jellyfish there. Got a, a nice boy over here. Look at that, get some, get some tentacles. Man, it's feeling like Bikini Bottom already. Am I right, guys? Now, like I was saying, the U-Draw's HD textures are amazing. And one of my favorite textures is the jam texture. So we're just gonna add on some jam, you know, spread that around. You know, get it everywhere. One of the other amazing features of the U-Draw is 3D modeling. You can make 3D pictures. That is, that blew me away when I first saw it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna give SpongeBob and Gary a nice little house by giving them some 3D pineapple textures just everywhere. Like, and it's, that, okay. Like too much pineapple. Like just too much, an offensive amount. So what we're gonna do now is just add, add some leaves. Um, open this please. Okay, so now that we've signed that, that is, um, I'm mean, selling this on Amazon.com for $3.99. No, I actually had a U-Draw tablet. You just borrowed it. Kevin, what's wrong? Nothing. Kevin, what is wrong? This is the future that liberals want! 
The Udraw tablet was a peripheral introduced by the now bankrupt publisher THQ back in 2010, at first only for the Wii but then later for the PS3 and 360. Compatible with only 10 games total and leaving 1.4 million units unsold, it is cited by ex-THQ president Jason Rubin as one of the many mistakes made by THQ that led to the publisher's demise. Enhancing your gaming experience of plastic junk you just don't need is an important and long-standing tradition of the video game industry, dating all the way back to Rob with the NES. But we also experienced a bit of a recent surge a few years back. Since the Wii's motion controls were bringing everyone to the yard back then and Guitar Hero was making bank with its expensive controllers, everyone and their mom started introducing overpriced gimmicky peripherals to get in on the action. Within that small window of time we got PlayStation Move, Microsoft Connect, the Tony Hawk skateboard, and eventually toys like Skylanders, Amiibos, and Disney Infinity. But the one we're focusing on today is the U-Draw and how impressively garbage it is. We'll also be talking about a Spongebob art game too, which is way, way better than anything with the U-Draw logo on its box really should be. SpongeBob SquigglePants, despite everything you would think, is a surprisingly well put together and charming minigame compilation. In fact, its worst elements are when it actually attempts to be an art game. It's that fact that makes it the perfect tool for illustrating the UDRAW's numerous design flaws. Now the thing about art-centric games is that the amount of enjoyment you get out of the experience is a much more one-to-one -one ratio with the amount of time and effort you invest than with most games. Like Minecraft, except creative mode is always on, you can't fly and if your creation looks boxy it's either the game's fault or you're just a talentless hack. So why not just invest in an actual art program? The answer to that question is people who are serious about art will do just that, invest in expensive but worthwhile equipment. Art games are marketed towards those with only a casual interest in art, or in the case of a themed art game, a major interest in the theme. That's the big challenge these games need to overcome. They absolutely have to nail the game part of art game in order to hold the attention of its players, because anyone seriously interested in art won't be spending much time with it in the first place. Art games that include a teaching component are a bit of a different beast, but for the most part these tutorials never go that in depth, and once again anyone serious about art has hundreds of better options at their disposal. SpongeBob SquigglePants is in that weird position where the dedicated art tools are so limited and forgettable that they might as well not be in the game at all, since the minigame elements are so strong on their own. And yet the game's entire aesthetic is based around the idea of different art styles, making me that much more disappointed in the creative side of this game. The game's setup is incredibly straightforward. Patchy the Pirate, in a very Blue's Clues style presentation, has welcomed the player to his SpongeBob fan art gallery, and he's introducing us to the many different styles of SpongeBob fan art while we work on our magnum opus. You have access to the main drawing mode from the get-go with almost all of the tools at your disposal. The only thing you're missing are a bunch of different themed stamps you'll unlock by playing through the game's equivalent of a story. So if I wanted to go ahead and draw some cool fan art, what do I have to work with? Well, a staggering grand total of one pen tool, with an incredibly versatile four pen sizes. Amazing. But that's not all. You also get an eraser. But no button to erase the whole page. No, no, you gotta do that manually. Millennials and their handouts. Other than that, you've got a piss poor bucket fill tool, some undo buttons, and the aforementioned stamps. Not even something as basic as a line tool is included. The resolution of the game is so low that the bucket fill tool doesn't even properly fill solid colors. Stamps can't be mirrored or even rotated at anything less than 90 degree intervals. They don't have any fun backgrounds, and the canvas is a set square that only gets two thirds of the entire screen space. Microsoft Paint genuinely has more features than this. This is the absolute bare minimum they could have included, and it makes for an art studio you're gonna forget about after three drawings. Which, incidentally, is the same number of drawings you can save on the Wii's memory. And that's a shame, because I would have loved to share the following masterpieces on the Wii's award-winning... This is, this is not true. Photo Channel. Here's one of everyone's favorite pair of bobs. I was pleasantly surprised to find out that this game is an excellent tool for recreating all my favorite Spongebob fanfiction scenes. I call this one... Are you feeling it now, Mr. Krabs? Still not sold on the quality of my creations? Here's a famous art critic to present his thoughts on my paintings. Oh, uh, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Dennis, they call me uh, Lamhut, and uh, I was asked to uh, comment on some great pieces of uh, art. So, um, first we're going to talk about the, the first piece that, uh, that I was showed. Um, it, it features Spongebob and uh, Bobby Broccoli um, high-fiving each other and it says friends. And what kind of sticks out to me about this one is that um, I remember as, as a child in, in school um, to, to teach us how to spell words, I remember they, they taught us to spell the word friend, you have to remember, if you fry a friend, it's their end, right? And when you think about it, you know, broccoli is a food, you, you can fry broccoli, but you know, the fact that they do have a friendship, that, that a food that is friable and, and, and could potentially have an end, and, and a living sponge are, are somehow able to, to maintain this relationship without, you know, eating each other. And, you know, it just, it kind of, it kind of speaks to you on, on this, on this higher level. It talks to you about the human experience, you know. We're all here and we, we can all get fried and we can all have an end, but, you know, we're here while we can and we might as well make friends with people who aren't the same as us, who don't fry the same way, who don't taste the same, you know. 
So um, I think that's uh, that's what's great about that one. Now the third and final piece is personally my favorite. Uh, it's actually completely self-aware and it says something about art. Bobby Broccoli is, is an absolute genius artist. Nobody does a better job representing the struggles than uh, Bobby Broccoli, uh, whatever the struggles may be. Through his artwork, you can tell that he really, really understands us on a deeper level. So, in some ways, a deeper level than we know ourselves. Um, and that's really something powerful that you don't see many artists um, accomplishing. And uh, for that reason, um, I'd like to announce Bobby Broccoli's official candidature in the United States uh, presidential election in 20, uh, what, 2020? Even setting aside the complete lack of features in the art mode, the U-Draw is a cheap hunk of plastic that runs off the nunchuck port of a Wiimote. It's not exactly designed to emulate the capabilities of a high-end dedicated drawing tablet. And I know a thing or two about tablets, I've been working with them for 3 plus years now doing all the art for this channel. Now I'm not arguing that the U-Draw is a failure because it doesn't provide an experience comparable to that of a $200 drawing tablet, because that would be silly. What I am arguing, however, is that the U-Draw is so poorly designed that I think I could reasonably draw just as well with the infrared sensor of the Wiimote as I can with the U-Draw. If the U-Draw can't improve in the function of the standard controller, then by definition, it fails as a peripheral. This picture was an honest attempt at drawing something good. This is not good. Since I assume most of you haven't had the chance to use a dedicated drawing tablet, let's go over some of the main issues with the design of the U-Draw. Number one, the tablet surface has no resistivity, so the pen slides all over the place when drawing, making it impossible to draw precise curves. Think about when you draw on paper, your pen tip doesn't skate around the page, you need to apply a certain amount of pressure to get it to move. Number two, the pen is heavy and bulky in size, not to mention the annoying cord that restricts hand movement. Number three, the U-Draw is designed to function as both a game controller and a tablet, so you need to hold the tablet with your left hand to operate the Wiimote. The reason this isn't ideal is the same reason that drawing on a clipboard you're holding is awkward. You always want to draw on a flat, stable surface. But the design of the U-Draw doesn't allow it to be placed on the ground, it's designed to be held. Also, while we're on the subject, reason number four, Get fucked, lefties! Number 5. The biggest drawback is the lack of sensitivity recognition in the tablet. In the same way that pressing a pencil to the page leaves a bigger stroke, almost all standard tablets should be able to register more pressure as a heavier stroke. It's no wonder the U-Draw can't do this, since it's essentially just a toy. The most it can do is make the tip of the pen act as a mini button if you tap the tablet surface. But not being able to recognize different levels of pressure makes this not much better than using a mouse or a Wiimote to draw. Number 6. There's no hole for the Wiimote sensor, so I can't have the thing set up and start the game. That's so dumb. Coincidentally, reason number 8 is it looks dumb. And number 9, from a marketing standpoint, why would you name your peripheral in such a way that every time I hear the name, I'm reminded of a different publisher? So the U-Draw isn't good for art, that much we've established. But maybe, just maybe, it can still justify itself if it makes for a decent game controller. The same thing goes for Squiggle Pants. We still have to talk about the story mode. When you first start up the game, you have access to a basic tutorial, telling you that you can draw, tap, flick, shake, and tilt the U-Draw to control the game. This tutorial is largely for clarifying the different types of inputs the U-Draw can recognize, whereas the rules for the individual minigames are explained to you on the fly. Ever played a WarioWare game? Then great, you know the drill. Outside of maybe the Flash and mobile game markets, 3 to 5 second long minigames, or nano games as they're called here, generally don't get a lot of love. The WarioWare series is possibly the only AAA exception to this rule, and it's by far one of Nintendo's weirdest franchises. And even then, they gave it to Mario's Evil Twin as a spin-off series of his existing spin-off series. It's a shame we don't see more arcade-style minigame gauntlets like the WarioWare titles more often. Which is why I was so pleasantly surprised to find out that SpongeBob SquigglePants may just be the best WarioWare clone on the market. Everything, down to calling them micro slash nano games, the five chunks of health, the couple words thrown at you for instructions, the splash screen that cycles in a satisfying rhythm to some sweet music, it's all there. I'm also not going to complain about it because they copy pasted all this with some serious finesse. In order to progress through the quote unquote story mode, you need to complete 20 nano games of each unique SpongeBob art style without losing five lives. This is a fun way to tie in with the art theme of the overall game, and the variety is fantastic, borrowing directly from that how to draw book I had as a kid. Like, no, the styles are directly from that book, that's like a five, eight year gap between that book and this game. Doodle Bob, Punk Rock, and Pixel Bob are my personal favorites. They even took the chance to throw in the occasional obscure show reference here and there. A minigame compilation is probably the best format to make use of the U-Draw with, since you only ever need one input at a time, and it doesn't even have to be that precise. There's some pretty clever concepts in here, like the one where you need to flick pages off a calendar to today's date. This one left me so shook since I forgot the Wii had an internal clock, so I was like, oh my god. Oh my god, they're watching me. There's also this really sneaky one I adore where you have to guess who's coming to the door, but they fool you by putting a flower on Squidward's head like a bunch of snakes. 
The U-Draw has its time to shine with some appropriate Connect the Dot games, some tilting games that use the Wiimote's motion controls, and some flicking the pen mini games that give me some Rhythm Heaven DS vibes. Especially this Sandy one. I played this for too long. I'd say my favorite collections in terms of gameplay selection are the B-Movie, Superhero, and Pixel Bob styles. The Pixel Bob style is extra fun because some of the nano games are unabashed references to other video games. Once you beat each style once, you unlock remix modes that smash all the styles together. The individual games themselves aren't that challenging, but going for a gold medal on Remix 2? That's some PTSD shit. After beating each theme once, you get the end credits, but going back and replaying each theme again unlocks even more nano games, so you'd likely get a good few hours of fun out of this game. I should probably mention the folks over at WayForward are the ones behind this title, so the art, music, and gameplay are all in line with their other quality work. I particularly want to highlight how effective the music was at getting me in a rhythm. Each song was catchy and repetitive in all the right ways. The soundtrack was a particularly sneaky trick to make me fail the Don't Move minigames. I had some of the most genuine video game based fun I've had in a while with this game, especially when going for high scores. On the off chance that you still have a U-Draw for some reason, this game may just be worth a few bucks. Still, I can't can't help but wish that this game was just made on its own and not attached to something as ridiculous as the U-Draw. If only this game also happened to be on a system that was uniquely tailored to the type of gameplay present. If only. Luckily, the gameplay is so simple that even the most poorly optimized controller can be used to play this game without hindering the experience. And let me tell you, the U-Draw is hella poorly optimized. Better yet, let me learn you a thing or two about drawing tablets. Number one, don't use them for games. Number two, that's it. Just don't. Just for clarification, however, there are two types of tablets, ones with built-in screens and ones that are solely for your inputs, so no screens. If we're talking about making a gaming peripheral that is cheap, small in size, and doesn't require anything more than a few AA batteries to operate, you're gonna have to go with no screen. Otherwise, what you'd have would require a screen with real-time gameplay at a decent resolution, and oops, congratulations, you just invented the Wii U. But I'm not here to criticize the Wii U, there's tons of evidence that it works fantastically as an art tool if Miiverse is anything to go by. What I'm arguing is that from the perspective of a game controller, tablets without screens are more trouble than they're worth because of the steep learning curve they present the user. They're fundamentally different beasts than something like, say, a computer mouse. If you haven't used a tablet before, think about it like this. Whereas you can lift up your mouse during a game to reposition your arm and continue right from where you left your cursor on the screen, the opposite is true for a tablet. The tablet surface is supposed to be mapped directly to your monitor or TV, so the top right of the tablet is always the top right of your TV. Muscle memory you've developed from years of playing with a mouse is going to sabotage you in anything moderately fast-paced. Take the minigame in SpongeBob Squiggle Pants, where you need to draw a line connecting the balls numbered 1 to 3 on screen. Unless you've practiced for hours and hours, you're not going to be able to stare at your TV and perfectly aim your pen at the spot on the U-Draw where you know your cursor needs to be. Think about how long it takes you to learn how to touch type with a keyboard. Outside of a game like, say, Okami, where tracing shapes on screen is an integral part of the gameplay, a tablet interface doesn't translate well to most game genres. And besides, a game like Okami would be much better suited to a console like the DS in the first place. Before we wrap things up, let me reiterate a few points. Number one, despite it clearly being marketed at children and not intended to be a high-end tablet, the U-Draw can't even achieve the bare minimum of making it easier to draw on the Wii than with a Wii mode. Number two, tablets are fundamentally not suited for use as video game controllers, which is why they are primarily used for the slow-paced field of art. And number three, SpongeBob Squiggle Pants is fucking rad. Also, thanks to Dennis for doing the thing. Go, go check his shit.